Hello all, my name is Krish Nayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So for the people who already know deep learning, I have already uploaded a video on dropout layers and we have also understood that in-depth intuition behind it and how it is basically used to overcome the overfitting in a deep neural network. Today in this video, I'm going to go and make you understand a new variation of a dropout layer which is called as Monte Carlo dropout layer. And the research paper regarding this came somewhere back in 2016 and uh, it is almost similar like dropout layer but yes because of this Monte Carlo simulation you can actually get a better result and accuracy when compared to the previous model where we are specifically using dropout layer. So let's go ahead and let's try to understand how exactly it works and please make sure that you subscribe the channel and do watch the video till the end because you will definitely get a better understanding of how you can use Monte Carlo dropout layers in a deep neural network. So let's go ahead and let me share my screen with you. So uh, if I talk about dropout layers guys, so over here with respect to this Monte Carlo dropout, it came up somewhere in 2016 and the research paper was written by Yarin Gell and Jovin Garmani. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. So over here, the dropout layer things like suppose if I probably consider this as an AN and that is artificial neural network. Now over here, whatever input I'm actually giving, this is basically my input layer. So this one is basically my input layer right and if i talk about this this is probably my hidden layer one this is my hidden layer two and finally i have my output layer so i hope everybody is familiar with this now in dropout layer what we do is that with respect to every layer you know we assign a kind of probability saying that okay in this layer we can assign values between 0 to 1 that is suppose if I say 0.3 that basically means that 30 percentage of the entire neurons in this layer will get deactivated while training and as the forward and the backward propagation will go ahead right suppose if I say okay in this forward propagation 30 percent basically means let's say two neurons has got deactivated so yeah I'm just taking as an example during the first epoch then again in the next epoch other neurons can get activated and why this is specifically used to overcome overfitting okay so overfitting should be reduced that is the reason why we are specifically using dropout layer so once and whenever I say this neuron is getting deactivated that time the weights will also be uh, removed from there and uh, the neurons will not be doing any any such thing so a detailed video about this intuition and practical implementation is already uploaded in the deep learning now the question arises what is this monte carlo dropout and how this monte carlo whenever we talk about monte carlo there's a specific word with that we basically use which is called as monte carlo simulation okay so with respect to this monte carlo what are the changes in this dropout layer that is currently happening and always remember guys once in the dropout layer also once this model is getting trained everybody should know that for the new test data what happens with respect to every weights this probability value gets multiplied okay and based on that we get the output but in the monte carlo dropout layer that things are not there okay so what happens uh, when we are doing the prediction for the test data this is very much important so prediction for the test data now in this prediction of the test data as the new test data will definitely come we will keep our dropout layer activated so this is the first point that you really need to be remembering right so you really need to keep the dropout layers activated because for the test data in the previous version we used to not keep the dropout layer activated because whatever the model is trained with just we need to multiply this probability with respect to every layer whatever uh, this probability specific specifically specifies that how many neurons we are keeping deactivated right what is the percentage of the neurons that is getting deactivated in every layer but while predicting the test data will definitely keep the dropout layer activated and then we will perform many simulations perform many simulation i'll make you understand what is this simulation okay now when we are predicting with respect to our test data suppose this is my specific model let's say that i've trained my model this is my ann model now while taking the test data let's say this is my x test data right there will be a specific parameter which will say that training should be true now when this training is equal to true is initialized in this model parameter then what happens is that 
when this uh, suppose I have specified okay fine this training is actually true this specifies that my dropout layer is still activated okay that basically means again suppose this is my neural network let's say okay here what will happen with respect to every prediction you know sometime this may get activated or sometime this may get activated okay so in short during the test data prediction also our dropout layer should be activated that is what monte carlo says and why this specific simulation this basically says that for every test data for every test data that i am passing through the model right through the model we will we will try to get at least some n results some n results now this n basically specifies my simulation okay whether i want 10 results or i want 20 results because as the neurons you know as the neurons over here is activated and deactivated since my dropout layer is activated in every layer right in every layer let's say over here 20 percentage of the neurons are activated so for every test data any one of the neurons can get selected and it can be dead or it can be activated like that right so that is the reason why i have kept this parameter called as training is equal to true now because of this what may happen is that suppose let's say uh, my output classes are three we may get different different probabilities okay suppose for in the first instance i may get 0.0, .0 in the second instance i may get 0 0.1 and 0 0.9 let's say these are my three classes and based on this i know this is my highest probability so this class my output may belong to so similarly with respect to different different simulation since my dropout layer is already activated i may get different different kind of outputs now once i get different kind of outputs with respect to various simulation at the end of the day we will try to find out the average or the mean average of all these results for one test data point so at the end of the day after doing the average with respect to all this specific probability let's say my end output is 0 0.0 0 0.4 0 0.6 this still indicates that my class 3 should be the output with respect to this. So in Monte Carlo dropout, the main thing is that for the test data also, we keep the dropout layer activated and then we perform many, many simulations to get the output for the test data. Now, since we are keeping the dropout layer activated, here you will be able to see that once we, we we are keeping this dropout layer activated that basically means the network will also get keep on training right and it will keep on changing the neurons like right? some of the neurons may get activated in the first data point output in the same data point output it may again get uh, you know deactivated or activated something like that so i hope you are able to understand what i'm actually trying to explain uh, i will also make a practical video with respect to this but definitely you need to first of all understand how dropout works dropout layer works and monte carlo simulation or monte carlo dropout layer is basically adding two things for the test data also my dropout layer will get activated and it will perform many simulation to find out the output for test data right so these are the two changes so i hope you have understood if you have not understood um, i would suggest just read the research paper otherwise just wait till the next practical class i'll also try to explain how we can implement monte carlo dropout in a deep neural network this was it from my side i hope you like this video see you all in the next video have a great day thank you and all bye bye